Thanks to Babbel for sponsoring this video. Did your pottery teacher tell you that trapped air causes explosions? I know mine did, and the truth is, they lied to you. I'm just kidding, they probably didn't know any better. This is just a very common myth that just gets passed around, and it comes from a fundamental misunderstanding of like, what is going on. So in this video, I'm going to prove to you, once and for all, that trapped air does not cause explosions. And once we're done busting that myth, I'm going to show you what actually does cause explosions in the kiln. I hope, unless I'm totally wrong, like I will hold space for being wrong. Maybe I'm full of it. Okay, so a couple of days ago, I threw this ball on the wheel. I tried to get it as round as possible. That doesn't matter. <laughs> the, what matters is that there is a whole lot of trapped air inside of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry out for a long time. We want all the water out of there. Specifically, what I'm going to do is let this dry out on top of a hot kiln. This is my favorite way to use that passive heat that's coming off of a kiln that you're already firing. The important thing here is that we are getting this baby to dry out because, spoiler alert, the culprit may be water instead of trapped air. Okay, it's a new day and it is several days later. I don't know how many days, I'll put it, I'll put it on the screen how many days later. And it is also two kiln cycles later where this baby was sitting on top of a kiln, a hot kiln, just roasting away, hopefully evaporating all of that water. Two kilns was probably a little bit of overkill, but since we're myth busting, I wanted to be extra, extra certain that this was very dried out before we tested it. Okay, let's load her into the kiln. And while I'm 98% sure that this won't explode, I'm going to create a little barrier here just so that I don't accidentally damage my thermocouple, just in case it explodes. Okay, we're ready to fire now, and I'm just gonna use my normal bisque program. I'm not gonna candle it because, I mean, this pot should be dried out already. So we'll see in 24 hours if I'm full of shit or not. While we wait for that to fire, let's take a little break and talk about today's sponsor, Babbel. Obwohl ich in den USA geboren und aufgewachsen bin, weißt du, dass ich eigentlich in Deutschland lebe? I have been living in Germany the last nine years, and let me tell you, learning German has been a struggle. I have tried almost everything, <laughs> online classes, in-person classes, but as a small business owner now, I ain't got time for that anymore. Then I found Babbel. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world. Endlich wird die Brücke gebaut. I'm obsessed with it because its lessons are designed by real language teachers, not a bot. My experience with other apps was frustrating because it felt like they were only designed for beginners. When I started with Babbel, I took a little quiz and they placed me in the exact right level right away. I'm also a huge fan of the lifetime subscription because you pay once and you can access the app forever. They even have live classes. It's like having your very own language school in your pocket. If you want to try it for yourself, I've got a special limited time deal for you guys to get started right now. That will be up to 60% off your first Babbel subscription using my link down below. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, the kiln just got cool enough to open it. It's literally at 100 right now. I didn't think I was gonna be nervous like when I was making this and everything, I was a little bit nervous, but um, it thunderstormed last night, which kind of put me in a spooky mood and my kiln was running all night and I was just like, what if it explodes? So let's, let's open it up. <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> Ta -da! Check it out. We have a fully fired, uh, completely trapped air, bisque sphere here. No hole in this. Here's, here's your proof, y'all. Trapped air does not cause explosions. So next we're gonna talk about what actually does. 
Okay, let's talk now about what actually does cause explosions in pottery, and in a minute, why I think people have the misconception that trapped air causes explosions. What does cause explosions is not trapped air, but trapped water. So if you are having the problem of explosions in your kilns, it means you are not waiting long enough for your pottery to dry. People often ask me how long to wait to fire their pottery, and honestly, this is an impossible to answer question because it is dependent on so many things. Things that are gonna slow down your drying are a humid climate. So that goes for the climate where you live, but also like the microclimate of your studio if it's humid in there. The temperature, for sure. If it's colder, that's going to slow down your drying. Little or no grog. Grog typically helps to speed up the drying because it gets air into your clay faster. When you're making your pot, if you're using a lot of water, so heavy water usage when you're constructing your work, and thick walls. So if you're coil building and you're going very thick like I do, it's gonna be a bit slower to dry. On the other hand, things that will speed up your drying are a hot climate, a dry climate, again, the microclimate of your studio and in the greater climate of the area, heavily grogged clay, light water usage when you're making your pottery, and also, of course, thin walls. So like, if it helps to have an example, it gets very cold here in the winter, and it's also like a humid environment, more or less. I typically wait about two weeks to fire my pottery, like if it's something thrown to a normal thickness on the wheel. I do, however, sometimes use a dehumidifier, especially during those winter wet times. But like, two weeks is kind of my my feeling. Of course, again, in summertime it will be shorter and in wintertime it will be longer. And I usually candle my pots if I'm not sure or I'll put them on top of a hot kiln just to make sure. So all that said, it makes sense that people might think their pottery is dried out when it's not because drying is just so complicated. So I've got some pots here that are well past their leather hard stage, but they're definitely not dry. I know that because like I understand the drying in my studio, like the pace that things dry, but they're also quite cold. So this can also be an indicator for you to figure out if your pots are dry or not, if they're like feeling cold to the touch. But these pots are dry enough that I could definitely believe a beginner might confuse them and think that they're dry and put them in the kiln and suffer an explosion. So let's test that out. I'm putting them at the bottom because I think that they could do less damage to my kiln down there. I could actually see these guys surviving this kiln because my bisque program is quite mild. I'd say there's like a 50-50% chance that these survive. I don't know, it, it's, it's gonna be an interesting experiment. Okay, let's check on our leather hard pots. Well, this is not ideal <laughs> because they did survive. Shoot, I should have made them thicker. Well, apparently you can fire leather hard pots on a slow enough bisque program. It's good to know. <laughs> okay, so if trapped air doesn't cause explosions and the real cause is water, even though I didn't necessarily prove that, <laughs> why does everyone believe that it's trapped air? Well, folks, it's our good friends, correlation versus causation. So here's the deal. If you make a sphere like this, think about the microclimate that is trapped inside the sphere, like when it's leather hard. Pretty humid, right? The only way for the pot to dry is from the outside in, and it will only dry a little bit at a time. The humid inside of the sphere will stay wet way longer than the outside is dry, so it slows down the drying from the inside out. Basically, you can think about it like this. If you have two pieces of clay that are completely identical thicknesses, the pot that is getting dry air from both sides is going to dry way faster than the pot that has a wet side and a dry side. And because people don't understand this, they will fire a pot that has trapped air way too early. It seems to be dry from the outside because the outside actually is dry, but the inside isn't. Well, that's all I have for you today. Let me know down in the comments if you also believe water is the true cause of explosions. 
I think I pretty much debunked the trapped air myth, but trapped water, still a big question mark. And if you're interested in learning about pottery from a more scientific angle, you should check out this video from a couple weeks back where I made a passive cooler out of just clay. Bye friends.